The question for today's video is that, is it worth to upgrade from iPhone 14 to an iPhone 15? Let's get into it. So in today's video, these are the things that I will be going through. Make sure you watch the full thing so you don't miss out anything important. Let's start with the design and the build quality. When it comes to the iPhone 14, you got aluminium on the side and also glass front and glass back, or as Apple would like to call it, the toughest glass on planet Earth ceramic shield, which you can easily crack or scratch. Make sure you get that Apple Care and that glass protector. Besides that, when you compare it to an iPhone 15, iPhone 15 is also aluminum on the side and ceramic shield on the front. When it comes to the back, the glass on this generation is a matte finish. So you get that pro finish compared to the 14 series, which is a fingerprint magnet and it kind of used to annoy me. And throughout this video, I was just cleaning it like a maniac. Well, with the 15, I did not even touch it. The only part that I cleaned was the front screen and that's it. When it comes to the comfort, it's so funny, but I prefer the 15 over the 14. It feels so light. The shocking part is that they're the same way. My guess is that because Apple has curved the edges and it feels really comfortable in the hand, it feels lighter and thinner, but I was so shook when I weighted them. They're literally 172 grams and I did not expect that at all. Both of these phones are IP68 water resistant. So that means they're splash proof and they can go up to a few meters down in water. But be really cautious because I've seen iPhones getting water damage even though they're IPS68. When it comes to the buttons on these, they have the same exact button placements and also you still have the mute switch on this one unlike the Pro Series which has action button on it. When it comes to both of them, you get a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR displays. In fancy words, they're the same size and the same picture quality. But this generation, the 15 series has got the dynamic island from the previous Pro series, which is basically a little software plus hardware combination, which allows you to interact with applications without into getting back to the applications and just touching that top part and easily like change your music or control your alarms and so on. So this is the most important part about this displays, the brightness. The brightness has changed massively. During my camera testing, I could not see the iPhone 14 at all. I was doing the camera testing under the direct sunlight. iPhone 14 was heating up and also the brightness was dropping and dimming as it was heating up. Talking about heating up, a lot of people are angry about the 15 series heating up. I've had zero issues with heating up. If anything, from my experience, the 14 series was the worst when it came to heating up. I never took my 14 Pro out of the case. I clearly remember the first time I hold my 14 Pro while it was charging, I felt like my hand was burning. When it comes to the 15 or the 15 Pro, didn't have that issue. While I was doing the camera testing, I experienced the same thing. So the 14 was heating up while the 15 was completely fine. The brightness I'm pretty sure was at 2000 nits. When it comes to the resolution, they have the same pixel density. You get the same True Tone technology and also the same P3 color gamut. Now let's do a quick speaker comparison. When it comes to mobile and wireless services, they both have Wi-Fi 6 and also they both support 5G. The models that I have, they're the Australian version, so they don't kind of support that millimeter wave 5G, but I put them still to the test. And as you can see, the results are really similar, at least in my experience, maybe the Australian models are not the best when it comes to 5G. Also, when it comes to Wi-Fi, you can't see my Wi-Fi is horrible. I did not see any speed difference between them. To answer your question again about the overheating, no, it does not overheat. 
It heats up like any other phone would, but it does not burn your hand. I assume some of these people have faulty phones. Maybe the, the environment that they're in is really hot. In my case, I did a camera test in a really hot day and the 15 was completely fine while the 14 was struggling. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I know you really want to go back to the video, but can you please subscribe and comment which phone you like? Because I want to quit my 9 to 5. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. Just, the button's right here. Maybe here. I don't know. I don't know where YouTube is placing it. And comment, please. And like, please. Thank you. So the iPhone 14 runs on the A15 processor while the iPhone 15 runs on the A16 processor, same as the iPhone 14 Pro. And this is just a Geekbench test, which is for nerds like me, that gives us a benchmark on how much it has improved over the last generation. And as you can see, the results are 2,292 on the 14 and 2,653 on the 15. I know it's not a massive jump, but look, a normal user won't feel the difference between it. And now I'm going to be doing the 3D mark test. This is going to put the graphic to the test. And again, when it comes to graphic A16 and the A15, it's not that much of a difference but it's an overall 10 to 15% improvement. So when it comes to the camera quality, this is the biggest jump in the normal series for the camera section. I say that because it goes from a 12 megapixel sensor to a 48 megapixel sensor, which is as good as the 15 Pro series. And because of that 48 megapixel sensor, now you have a two optical zoom option, which the 14 doesn't have. So if you wanna zoom in on the 14, the 2X is basically digital zoom. Well, the 15 is basically cropping in on that 48 megapixel and giving you another 12 megapixel photo, but at a lossless type of quality. Let's look at some samples. You let me know which one you like, then I'll talk about them. So what I realized is that Smart HDR5 is one of the biggest things that has happened to the 15 series. So like the sky is not too bright like you see in this photo and it has tried to fix that part. When it comes to daylight, you won't see much of a difference unless you zoom in. So what you see on this camera is the iPhone 14 and what you see here is the iPhone 15, the normal one. And both are shooting in 4K 30 frames per second. And as you can see, I'm switching between the audios let me know which one looks better. Right now, I'm really struggling to see the display on the iPhone 14 because the brightness is really bad. I'll just take a quick video and show it to you guys. It's really difficult to see the 14 because the brightness is doubled up on the 15. When it comes to the iPhone 14, you only get up to 5x digital crop zoom, while with the 15 you get 10x, although it has no extra telephoto lens. And also when it comes to the video, you get an extra 2x optical, like the photo, plus you can go up to 6x digitally, while on the 14 you can go up to 3x. That's basically two times more on the 15. So when it comes to cinematic mode, the iPhone 15 has a 1x and a 2x range while the normal 14 is just 1x. Um, let me know which one looks better. Also, I'm going to be doing a weird test. I don't know which one is doing a better blur between my fingers. This is the test that I do with cinematic mode, but yeah, is the 14 better or the 15? When it comes to some harsh scenarios, this is the photo that it has came out. This video that you see on the screen, I was trying to get a picture of the moon. Uh, it, it's not the best, like it's not the Galaxy S23 Ultra type of moonshot, but 14 is just hopeless. The 15 got there like really, really badly, but at least it's getting there. You know, a win is a win. Like you see, and at least you don't see a little dot in the sky, but it tried, you know, 
I'll give it a win when it comes to that. So is it worth the upgrade? I can easily say this is the best upgrade to the normal series. From the build quality to the 48 megapixel camera to the bright display and also with dynamic island. And let's not forget about the USB-C. Yes, it's actually useful. Not the fastest, but it's useful. Uh, if you're coming from anything from 14 or before, you would enjoy this phone a lot. And I even say 14 because if you own the 14, you basically had a 13. So if you wanna upgrade, go ahead. This is a great phone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe down below and let me know, would you upgrade to this phone? A lot of people in my previous videos have said that they're not gonna upgrade from the 13 Pro Max to any of these series, which I'm shook. So I would like to know your opinion. So please make sure you subscribe and you like, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> please subscribe. Guys, can you please subscribe so I can quit my nine to five, please? Thank you.